Last year, Kyle Busch banked $1 million for winning NASCAR's All-Star Night. But before you win it, you have to get in it. And that's what these young talents, future superstars perhaps, that's what they're going to be looking to do in the open race. All-Star Night in Charlotte. It's the Open. Next. Nineteen-year-old William Byron is racing here at Charlotte for the first time ever in a cup car. This is the track he grew up watching races at. This is the place he realized his dream was to be a race car driver. Now tonight he has a chance to race his way into the all-star race. Watch for him to hook up with his teammates starting ahead of him to get the job done. <laughs> That's a heck of a battle. William Byron going after Chase Elliott on the right and your lead battle on the left Alex Bowman has caught Eric Almirola. I see I think that's one of those situations where Byron he, he probably could have been aggressive there and used that as a block and gone up the racetrack and gotten right up in front of Chase Elliott and maybe prevented that outside momentum that Chase had off the of turn two. Well it wasn't from lack of trying I can tell you that because he pushed him all the way down the front straightaway right here. Byron trying to come back on the inside. I was starting to ask, aren't they teammates? <laughs> <laughs> Edges ahead. Boy, I'm impressed. Bowman was able to get back by Paul Menard on that top side. Oh boy, getting a little dicey back in here. Bubba Wallace. Well, they're the two, there. two rookie contenders this year. William Byron in the 24, Bubba Wallace in the 43. Jamie. Well, William Byron in the 24 took two tires last time. He just told Darian Grubb, his crew chief, if you give me four tires, I can go anywhere. They're going to take a bigger swing at air pressure. And What's up, guys? Alex Weaver here at Charlotte Motor Speedway with William Byron, the driver of the number 24. Now, Charlotte has kind of a strong history with that number and carrying that on the side of your car. What does that mean yeah. for you to come to your home track and carry that number? Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, Jeff Gordon had his first win here in the Cup Series, so uh, we're hoping for that on Sunday. But, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun just to carry that number and, and see all the excitement from the fans. We had some of the biggest 24 fans I've seen around uh, the track this today in, in qualifying. So it's really cool and special, so I, I enjoy it. Now, a lot of drivers like coming to Charlotte Motor Speedway because it's right down the road from shops, but yeah. Charlotte's your home base. Yeah. It's where you were born and raised. So describe kind of coming back here and racing at your home track. Yeah, I love it. I, I grew up going to the stands and, and watching this race and uh, sitting up there with my dad. It's just a lot of fun to come back here. It feels like home, and it's just fun driving in the racetrack and coming from home and, and being able to, to just kind of roll out of bed and, and go to the racetrack. So it's really cool, and uh, I enjoy racing here. It's a fun racetrack. Uh, it's very challenging, but it's always it's always cool to come here. This is your rookie now, season, so yeah. meeting expectations. How do you feel like your rookie season has taken off so far? You know, I feel like it's been solid in some aspects. I feel like leading rookie of the year standings is what we wanted to do. Um, we obviously want to have some more top tens, some top fives, but I feel like that's coming. Uh, the last couple weeks have been strong, and we just have to finish it off. So I think that uh, this weekend's a good starting point for us. There's more points on the line this weekend, and if we can get into the top 16 in points here soon, uh, that's going to be a, a really good goal of ours for the playoffs. What's up, race fans? Alex Weaver here at Charlotte Motor Speedway with the driver of the 24 Chevy, William Byron. The Coca-Cola 600 is yes. one of the crown events in NASCAR and a big race in general, but it also means a little bit more having the name on the hood of your car. What does that mean for you guys yeah. to be able to ride 600 miles with them? Yeah, it means a lot to have their name on the car. Obviously, this weekend's about the troops and, and what they do for our country. So uh, we have Major Donahue on the car, and he's a former Liberty University alum. So it's really great to have him on the car and just look forward to uh, honoring his family and hopefully doing them proud. You no know, a win is big anytime, and a win for you especially would be your first cup win. Yeah. But being during NASCAR salutes, would that mean a little bit more for you guys? Yeah, it would. I mean, this is a huge weekend. I remember coming to this race, and they had the bagpipes and all the festivities before the race. The Blackhawks were flying around. And uh, it's just a really cool event. Uh, a lot of fans come out to this, a lot of patriotic NASCAR fans. and um, I, I enjoy seeing that and, and kind of uh, seeing their patriotism uh, with our country. So I look forward to it, and it hopefully it would be a, a big win. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, 
Please welcome Virginia Johnson, Senior Vice President of Government Relations and External Affairs for the USO, and Robert Irvine, celebrity chef, veteran of the Royal Navy, and founder of the Robert Irvine Foundation. This Memorial Day, the USO and Coca-Cola are proud to salute America's military service members and their families, especially those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. To give the command, here with me today is Robert Irvine, a tireless supporter and tour veteran of the USO. He recently returned from his 12th USO tour and joins me today to honor the sacrifices our service members and their families make every day for our nation. So please join him in saying the most famous four words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Joy. Good evening and welcome to Charlotte. Tomorrow, our most solemn of holidays, the Memorial Day tradition that began in 1868 to honor our Civil War dead continues today. But first, there is a race to be run on this Sunday, and it's the longest one in NASCAR. Continue the world's biggest day in auto racing, NASCAR's longest race. Time for the Coca-Cola 600. Endurance, mental toughness, strategy, skill. You are exhausted when that race is over with. A lot of great history with this race. When Jeff Gordon retired three years ago, young phenom Chase Elliott took over his seat. NASCAR has no bigger star in the waiting than the 22-year-old Elliott. His family is racing royalty. But in his third full season at the cup level, Hendrick Motorsports is struggling, and Elliott is still seeking his first career win. Gordon got his first win here in the 600. Boy, it'd be good medicine for Hendrick Motorsports and perfect timing if Elliott could get his first here tonight. Larry? We're back at 24th. Remember, Ryan Newman had a pit road penalty for being over the wall too soon. That's his 31, battling rookie William Byron in the Hendrick 24. And just ahead, Matt Kenseth, who two weeks ago returned to the series to drive the Jack Roush number six. Defending series champ honored at the White House this week by the president. Alex Bowman to the inside in the 88. Jamie. Pretty decent run for these guys so far tonight. They started this race 27. And coming into this race, Greg Ives, his crew chief, said he really had to think outside the box. They wanted to bring a different package because what they've been doing has not been working. So their main issue was just lacking front grip. Alex is saying that when he gets around other cars, though, he just gets tight. Whoa, oh. he gets his teammate. William Byron into the wall. I'm ready. Coming Inside, off turn two. You're clear. Got pretty hard right rear damage. You're clear to the bottom. Mm, very similar to the three car of Austin Dillon getting into turn one. The back of the car stepped out. Got in the wall, Vince. You know, Byron has talked all night long. The one issue they have fought is he just felt like it is just bad loose. And when he tried to put wheel in it, it felt like the back end would snap out. But they thought on the last uh, pit stop, they'd taken a couple of big swings at it. They felt like it was getting better, but it definitely got away from him there. We're under caution at lap 114 for the Liberty University sophomore, William Byron. Well, they said they <clears throat> took a couple of big swings at it. They're going to have to take a couple of really hard swings at it now because <laughs> With it's going to take, take a hammer to it now. You could see our mile per hour meter there showing 190 miles an hour getting into the corner. Slows down to about 160 where that car slides sideways and gets into the wall. Yeah, that back just steps out and you try to catch it and then it shoots to the right. And as a driver, you're committed. You're committed as you turn into that corner. You're putting the wheel into the, you know, the front tires, just hoping those rear tires grab that banking and stick. William Byron racing to remember Army Major Michael Donahue lost in Afghanistan at age 41, an alumnus of Univers uh, Liberty University, leaving behind a wife and three children. You know, guys, we've only run seven laps. The pits are open. The, the stopwatch had already fallen off a second. But I go back to the conversation between Paul Wolf and Brad Kazan. We're 18 laps deep into stage two 
On the caution for William Byron, Ross Chastain got the free pass. So 122 laps are complete here in Charlotte. How about a quick word from the Bush guy and the number four crew? I think, Mike, we've seen that 12 car Blaney. A couple of times Bristol comes to mind where he had the car to beat. A little bit of luck stage two and Kyle Busch has dominated this race from the pole 135 laps later the story with Kyle Busch is that oh it looks like we have William Byron smoking having some problems here but Kyle Busch he's never won a points cup race here at Charlotte Motor Speedway but Michael this is the only track of all the tracks going currently that he hasn't won on he'd be the only driver if he were able to win here who would have a victory on all the tracks but of course the night is just beginning yeah he's got a three second lead Chris but I'm worried about this team they how do you work on a car that that is this dominant this early because there's some guys back in the pack that are making some nice moves. One of them is Kurt Busch in the 41 car. He's the 2010 winner of this Coca-Cola 600. And Chris, right now his lap times are as good as his brother. So the Busch up front is liable to have some company from the other one. Yeah, Kurt Busch, of course, with Stuart Haas. So they've dominated the early portion of the season. Back when he won this race, he was a member of Penske Racing. And they could make history with that Indy 500 win and a Coke 600 win in the same year if one of their drivers goes on to win. Let's go further back in the field in the 43 car, Bubba Wallace. He's running 11th, Chris. Great lap times again, but remember, he went to the back of the pack to start this race. They had to come from the rear. He's methodically worked his way through. He's running 11th right now, and that's where he's been lately. A couple of cars that had fresher tires went by him, but he's been able to hold court and stay right there. So really impressive run for Bubba Wallace here in the Coke 600. Kurt Busch making his move and don't forget Martin Truex who won a record seven races on mile and a half tracks last season. You're defending a champion of the sport and two years ago dominating this race right there behind Kyle Busch and his Toyota. Let's head back upstairs rejoin Darrell Waltrip Jeff Gordon and Mike Jordan. Thanks Chris William Byron did make it to pit road where they continue to make repairs on his Chevrolet trouble on the right rear from that bout with the wall earlier. Here are two of his Hendrick Motorsport teammates battling for 13th, Alex Bowman and Jimmy Johnson. And Mike Wheeler, they can go another 20 laps and they are, are known for trying to stretch it out and pin some drivers down. Years ago, that thing is on a rail, running just a little quicker than everybody else. Well, the Joe Gibbs team, the four car team, with 19 to go, stage two will mark the halfway point of the race. Only two cars out of the competition, Kevin Harvick and William Byron. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, as we rise once again to recognize your presence in our life, we want to first of all ask that your blessings be upon the men and women of our armed forces as well as the first responders that are protecting and defending our freedom. Be with them as well as their families. Father, we ask you to watch over these drivers, teams, and officials. Give everybody a great, safe day of racing. And for all of us that are here to enjoy this day, to enjoy this event, Father, I just pray that it would be a wonderful, memorable experience for all, and that your presence and that your peace would be with us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. It upsets the rear of that car, so if you're already loose, it's going to upset it even more. Brad Kozlowski's picked up two spots since the start. Just made the pass on rookie William Byron, who has a truck series win here at Pocono. William Byron leaving his pit. Has to get refired there. Well, you saw the rear tire start to spin, and then it stalled. Just kept his pace. Teammates for 15th, Alex Bowman. Making the pass on William Byron, who took two tires on his stop. 15th place, Eric Jones, last year's Rookie of the Year, and this year's Rookie Hopeful, yeah. Byron. Byron and Jones, sounds like a law firm. Hey, there's something we haven't seen in a long time here at Pocono, the crossover move. Yeah. And, and I got to give a shout out to my, my buddy Steve Latar, who is a crew chief of mine. Those wins with Dale Jr. here in the 88 car were with crew chief Steve Latar. Even though Jr. ran great with Greg Ives here, never won here with that combination. Oh, uh, don't worry, Jeff. Steve will have the whole second <laughs> half of the season to explain it all to us. Yeah. Well, he, he, he did almost cost me my life here one time because I blew a right front brake rotor, so I'm not going to wow. give him too much. Okay. <laughs> 
Chevys, the Ganassi cars, six and seven. Ninth through 12th, the Hendrick cars all in a row. I just like to, I continue to think, you know, today will prove us out. The Chevys have made some improvements. They have made some gains. Look at William Byron on the outside. Going to try to go to the outside of the 11. It's a heck of a battle right here, man. Three Hendrick cars after that 11. Boy, Jimmy's really loose here. Next week, come get a piece of the action at Michigan. There is the website and the phone number for your tickets to Michigan Speedway. If you like the top speed you're seeing here. Oh, baby. Woo-wee. What's the track record there? 210, something like that? I don't, I don't know. Some, some, some guy, some retired well, they, guy. I was going to say, do record. you know who holds the track record? <laughs> Any idea? <laughs> I think so. I could just see it now when I was out there making that lap. You were up here going, there ain't no must way. be somebody else driving that car today. <laughs> Does he well, have I, any idea how fast he's going? The car must be really good. Yeah, right. <laughs> Boy, it was. <laughs> it was that day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, end of stage two. Kevin Harvick's going to lead them all onto pit road. I don't know. I think Boyer's car is not very happy. Seat is 23, still three wide. Paul Menard makes a smart inside. decision to back down a little early. Here comes the crossover of the 14. Well, they've got to get past Gray Galding, who was clogging up the outside lane there. Nice move by Clint Boyer to. Go all the way from the outside, get turned underneath the 21 and past the 24 of William Byron. Yeah, here comes the 10 of Almirola. He's all of a sudden showing up in the picture. 13. Nice William Byron battle. coming back, though. Vince. Hey, how about William Byron and the job that he has done today? This is just his 14th cup race and his first cup race ever here at Pocono. And tip the cap to Darian Grubb because he has given him a good car. There have been very little complaints from the young William Byron today. Yeah, uh, three Vince. In fact, today, uh, that two-tire change on the first pit stop helped keep them up in the pack and in contention. It's worked out pretty well for them today. Yeah, he, he's young. He hadn't he hadn't learned, hadn't learned how to complain yet. He'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Just yes, sir. <laughs> it's fine right now. And William Byron, the rookie, into the top ten. Hung in there all day long. Had a yep. top ten car pretty much all day long. William Byron doing a nice job. It seems like the bigger the challenge of the track, the better William Byron does. I, I just think he likes to run, set in the simulator a lot. I think it really helps you at this racetrack with the shifting and all your points that you have to hit. That our flag was still there. Well, you guys talk about future farmers of America. The guy next to me is possibly young enough to still be in high school and be in the FFA. William Byron, you are now 14 races into your Cup Series career. Things have been picking up as of late for you. How are things going from your perspective in the driver's seat? Yeah, I mean, we've we've been uh, up and down a little bit the last couple of weeks, but I feel like we've been pretty much on par with the performance of where our teammates are. So that's kind of what I look for and, and trying to keep up with those guys and, and trying to learn from them. So I feel like our race car is pretty good this weekend. Um, we're starting 14th. I think we're going to advance a few spots. So um, should be able to get a good starting spot and hopefully just get this rain out of the way. Let's talk about Michigan just a little bit. This racetrack to you was nearly your first Xfinity Series win last year. One of the most exciting finishes we saw the entire season long. You yeah. come into this race today. Do you have extra confidence in this place knowing that you can get around here so good? Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, you won here with uh, JRM, so it was kind of a good place for them to go to. So I had a lot of momentum coming here and, and anticipated it being a good weekend for us. So uh, our fall off in practice was really good. Similar to this week, we don't have much fall off. So whether it's our engine department or whatever it is at Hendrick Motorsports, we seem to uh, get around here pretty good. So hopefully that leads us to a good race today. You alluded to the fact Hendrick Motorsports has, has been making gains here as of late. It's been noticeable on the racetrack. Is there one area in particular that has just been the area you guys pointed out and said this is what we've been getting better at or is it multiple things? Um, I, I think we've been making little gains at a time. Uh, we still need a, a little bit of a, a bigger gain to, to really get up there with some of those guys. But I feel like we are making little gains that, that improve us from maybe 15th to 10th and, and maybe 10th to 5th uh, here soon. So I feel like those things are just making us better and, and our teams are communicating closer than ever. So uh, that, that part is good. Uh, we, need, we need that next big step, I think, but uh, we're, we're getting there. William Byron looking to score his second career top 10 today. Regan, yeah, he said his goal was to keep the trajectory going upward as he uh, 
got his career rolling. Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, look at that. That's a, that's a, uh, I'm going to take my, my bar for a ride. A DUI waiting to happen. Be careful there. Now, the car business has changed a lot. Uh, these fellows are both car dealers, new car dealers, since the win on Sunday, sell on Monday days of the 60s, 70s, and into the 80s when you raced and won here. But winning still matters. It matters very much to Toyota, to Ford, to Chevrolet, to all the makes that are involved in racing, not just here, but worldwide. Wait, but what do you what do you recall about this trip in the, uh, back in June of 16? I remember having a fast car, and there was a lot of green-white checkers at the end of this thing. <laughs> so I remember, and I had to keep up. Daniel Suarez with us, with Michael Walter, Chris Myers, our entire crew. We're going to bring you beyond the wheel straight ahead. And here in Michigan, we will give you updates as they continue to drive the track and hopefully get to go racing. Plus, the excitement and rivalries you may have forgotten about. To be the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! When one brave fan jumped the fence at Talladega, his party ended. So every time you go to Talladega, it's a great party. And every time you stand on the back stretch in the infield, you sit around, you have a couple of adult beverages, and the story always comes up about the year the fans stole the pace car. We welcome you to Alabama International Motor Speedway, where the fastest field in the history of NASCAR stock car racing has assembled. Security back in the 80s was not as strong. Yeah, security was lax at Talladega, to say the least, at that time. And fan wanders out, jumps in a pace car, and decides he's going to run a few laps. Well, the pace car, we understand has been stolen. The uh, officials are not driving this thing, and <laughs> somebody has actually gotten in the pace car and stole it. Is that somebody driving that stole it right there? Oh, wow, look at this. That's when the hold my beer and watch this was invented. You know you're having a hell of a good party when some drunk gets in the pace car and takes off in it. There are at least two policemen on motorcycles that are pursuing the pace car right now, and up till now, the pace car has not been caught. And he ran a few laps. It's a big track. It's hard to catch him. They've created a roadblock there coming off of turn number four. Let's see what happens when he gets to the uh, roadblock. Will he try to go through it, or will he stop and be captured? It wasn't cops that got him. It was the safety trucks that you saw. They just blocked the track. I'm pretty sure right now he's, no, he's not happy. Good idea, and then they remember how that story ended with the fan maybe not the best confrontation with the local enforcement. It was definitely a, a, a roll tide moment. Well, that was a gutsy move by that dude, something the people in Talladega will uh, always remember. Following that incident, there was a new level of law enforcement at the track. Crime prevention to me is everyone watching out for everyone kids, parents, senior citizens, everyone can help clean up the community and take pride in making it a safer place to live. We all must get involved if we expect to help McGruff take a bite out of crime. Join Kale and take a bite out of crime. Ed's rivalry with Jeff Bodine was probably the nastiest. We had had several fun years when Jeff Bodine was, uh, and Dale was having a few rounds. Dale Earnhardt running Bodine wheel to wheel. Whoa! They went for a spell where they just wrecked each other. It's as if, to me, at one point, I'm like, do they even care about finishing these races, either one of them? Like, they're just wrecking each other, and it's like, if they don't do something about it, I'm going to get tough and go to war, I guess. When you get down there to the last lap, and you get your front end in there, and the guy tries to cut you off, you stand your ground. And a lot of times it, it comes out bad, but, uh, you know, a lot of times you win races, too. That demanded a personal appearance in Daytona in front of Bill France, Jr. I can remember it like it was yesterday. NASCAR's president, Bill France Jr., called Dale Sr., Jeff Bodine, and their car owners to Daytona to settle their feud. When he set us in that office and told us that he wasn't going to put up with it, sport would survive without us, he made it real clear, you're not going to get no more trouble. I don't care if one of you run on one side of the track, if one of you run on the other one. Drove backwards and still won. Tim Richmond. When you think about a badass, you think about Tim Richmond at Pocono in 86. And Richmond is loose. Hang on. Around he goes, collected by Richard Petty. He was crashed. He, he had his car in reverse. Here is Tim Richmond trying to get the car. He has the car refired, trying to back it out of the grass, down out of turn two, and he heads backwards down the short chute. He was just fearless, and he did things that would make you shake your head. He knew how to drive. That's what he did. He was a natural. You can just tell. I mean, that seems like something out of a movie, that you drive in reverse to get all the way back to pit road and then still go on to win the race. Hell yes. Hey, Rut, I'm pretty sure that was a scene from Days of Thunder. I don't usually kiss, man, but this is a chance in a lifetime. Elliot, his 
going toward immortality. Bill Elliott gets the checker flag. Bill Elliott has won an additional one million dollars in 1985. We couldn't be more happy to present Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, Georgia, one million dollars, and he earned every penny of it. Well, we've had more than a two-hour rain delay. And Trace Adkins, country singer, hanging around with those loyal fans to give the command. You're watching NASCAR on Fox live from Michigan. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command to start the engines, please welcome today's Grand Marshal, country music star, Trace Adkins. Drivers, start your engines. All right, we're set to go for stage number one. We've been talking about the big three. Who is poised to join them to become the Fab Four? Those guys have been really fast. Um, great race cars, great drivers and teams. And, um, you know, that, that makes everyone push a little bit harder, I think, to try to get to their level and try to get to as dominant as what they are. I try to lean on those guys just to get some insight on what I can do better and also what to look out for as a rookie. Throughout that time, I think as you do go through struggles, you're, you're getting better yourself. Um, and hopefully when things turn around for us, we'll uh, be better for it. So who is best poised to join Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex? The rookies in this race, William Byron and uh, Bubba Wallace, are running their fastest race laps of their career right now. Yeah, and William Byron is doing. I've just noticed that it's a heck of a job for the for that uh, 24 team right now. William Byron running eighth and hanging in there. Lap times look really good. And Bubba 26th. The other rookie, uh, Garrett Smithley, after the first lap went to the pit and then to the garage. And we heard from William Byron yesterday after practice. Had a lot of confidence. He's real happy with the way his car was driving. So that's transferring over to today's race because uh, he's pretty solid in eighth place right now. Uh, he's, uh, he's such a methodical guy. He just does so much studying and he's so well prepared when they start the race. He, uh, he it's like he has this. It's like an old soul. It's like he's been here before, but he hadn't. But he races that way. Hendrick Chevy teammates. Bowman and Elliott, 12th and 13th. William Byron up in sixth, carrying the flag for Rick Hendrick. Boy, that Byron kid is going somewhere today, yep. Mike. I mean, that car has been in a top five or six, seven right here the whole start of the race. Jamie? Yeah, and they didn't have the best weekend as far as qualifying or practice goes. I talked to his crew chief, Matt McCall, this morning, and he just kind of shook his head like, we're not sure if we made it better or not. Yeah, in fact, said he thought they were two to two and a half tenths off the fast guys. But today, with the cooler temperatures, it's really played into their hands and the adjustments they made to this race car. Well, one thing I do know, I heard Jamie Mack say back in Charlotte when they talked about the Hendrick engine upgrade. He was one of the guys raving about how much better the engines were. We haven't talked about that a lot, but ever since Charlotte, the Chevy guys, the Hendrick guys have all had better engines. 2.7 seconds ahead of teammate Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick wins stage two from Boyer and Kirk Busch. It's a one, two, three sweep for Stuart Haas. Here we go for eighth, ninth place, Jones and Byron. Give it to Byron. Nice job. I'm going to give a call out to William Byron, that 24 car. He's looking to maybe get his second top 10 finish of the year. By far, the best Hendrick Chevrolet driver today.